Hello fellow coffee botherers, in this video we're going to be talking about how to do hands-free auto steaming with just about any espresso machine. This will work with most machines, if your machine has a steam wand on a ball joint it should work. If you're trying to do this with a particular machine and you can't get it to work, let me know in the comments below and I'll see if myself or the community can help. What we're talking about here is known as ghost steaming, which is where you have a waking out of body experience and your astral body steams the milk for you. Just kidding, because obviously your astral hands would go straight through the jug. Ghost steaming is a pro barista workflow hack. Baristas have been doing this for years, but to be honest, I'd never thought about trying it with home espresso machines. I've always just assumed you need the immense steam pressure of pro espresso machines to do that. This will work on the Gadget Reale, it'll work on most commercial espresso machines as far as I'm aware, but Kickback Coffee Roasters alerted me to the fact that this works really well on Sage machines. I tried it and it works brilliantly. And it's easy, ridiculously easy in fact, and it produces jug after jug of perfect microfoam once you've got the knack. If you're someone who's struggled with learning to pour latte art because you just can't consistently produce great milk texture, you're not alone. I think getting the knack of properly texturing consistently is the hardest part of learning to pour latte art. It certainly was for me. But once you've tried this a couple of times, you'll never have that issue again. Not only that, but you'll have your hands free to do other things with, like clicking the like button, for example. I shall now demonstrate And now I shall demonstrate ghost steaming. So all we do is put the milk in the jug and put the jug on the drip tray. Just make sure you're using the same amount of milk each time as this will help with consistency. Adjust the position of the jug on the drip tray so you can get the one tip close to the surface, roughly in the center of any of the four sections of the jug. So imagine the jug was a piece of cake or a piece of anything round, could be brie or a hobnob, or the biscuits are available. Imagine that sliced in four. The best position I find is around the center of any of these, it doesn't matter which. You may have to play around depending on your machine, your milk jug and how much milk you're using, but once you find an area which is ideally close to the center of one of these imagined four segments, with the tip just breaking the surface, just do the same each time and you'll get used to that position. Purge the wand first, get rid of the excess moisture, find your steaming position with the tip just about breaking the surface of the milk. Start the milk steaming and at this point you should hear the hissing or ripping paper sound. Just leave it to do its own thing. The milk will rise, which will then mean the tip is deeper. Aeration will stop, the milk will heat up, distributing the foam and all should be well. If you don't get that hissing sound when it's starting, adjust the position slightly so the one tip breaks the surface a tad more. If you get loud splashy bubbles, adjust it so the tip isn't quite breaking the surface as much. Whatever that position is, with the hissing or ripping paper sound, remember that for the next time. Then just stop when your milk hits your desired temperature, which I'd usually recommend to be somewhere between 60 to 65 Celsius. I wouldn't go any hotter than 65 or you'll burn your milk and make this cow sad. Next, polish your milk and pour. So here are some common problems you might encounter with ghost steaming and how to fix them. The most common is having an issue with the texture, either too wet, meaning not enough air was introduced, or too dry, meaning you introduced too much air. If there's no foam and the milk all blends with your coffee and none of it hits the surface, it just means you need to adjust the position so when you start out, the wand is breaking the surface a little bit more. If there's too much foam, start with the one tip position so it's slightly deeper into the surface of the milk. If you don't have much room on your drip tray to maneuver your jug into the perfect position, you might have to alter the amount of milk you're using, or use a different size jug, or make another adjustment, such as putting something under the jug to raise it up slightly. 
So give this a try and let me know in the comments how you get on. If this changes your world, then go to kickbackcoffee.co.uk and buy some of their lovely coffee beans because I'd never have tried this without being inspired by them. Wimbledon tennis balls are kept at a strict temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, which has nothing to do with clicking the like button, but click the like button if you also like to keep your balls warm. Thank you very much for watching and if you love coffee and enjoyed this video, we've got tons of content about how to make better coffee at home to take you from beginner to home barista and we've got reviews and how to's on the most popular machines. If you like the sound of that, click my face to subscribe. Tatty bye!